What's up, YouTube? It's Rinse and Reese and the brothers. And it's the impact of technology on uh, global business operations and markets. Okay, here we go. Uh, so the first thing we need to understand is uh, this, people, that in, in the modern world, uh, technology is basically essential for expansion. Um, it can be just the, the biggest thing that kids get confused with in this topic is that technology in global markets is not just internet shopping. Okay, there are a wide range of technologies which businesses use um, to help them expand. Obviously, having the ability to buy from your website is great. And we talked about that in unit three, but you really, in, in exam questions on this topic, you really need to show your depth of understanding by including business to business and business to consumer. So the two key phrases really that you need to remember for exams is and in any explanation, business to business and business to consumer. So and the common response you get in the waste exam for questions like this is all about e-commerce and how you can buy 24 seven online. Um, and sometimes if it's like a six mark question, you get four because you fail to recognize the business to business aspect of technology, okay? So how do individual businesses use it between each other? Well, it could do with ordering, it could be to do with supplying, it could be to do with feedback. It's obviously to do with communication through email or Skype or video messaging or video conferencing, um, spare parts, insurance. So I guess just don't forget that while we can buy all those things online as individuals, businesses will also do the same thing. Okay, yeah, and, and uh, the methods up there, so via laptop, notebook, tablets, mobile, it's all technology which assists um, businesses in expanding. So you guys would be very, very familiar uh, with businesses selling their product or service to consumers. You do it every day, more than likely, in um, whatever, be it retail, be it tickets, be it insurance, um, government uses it. Um, yeah, guys, you're very, very familiar with that. But the key point to take away is don't forget the business to business aspect of the concept. <clears throat> Just while you guys are writing, what makes a good website? If you're a retailer, if you're a business, can you can you tell me four elements that would make a your your website attractive? Attractive? I don't know. What are the four what, what are four key things which make a website a good um, customer experience, I suppose, Ben. Is it like visually pleasing? Good. And what makes it visually pleasing? Um, lots of bright colours and like, organised and that makes your website. Right. Good. Yeah. Easy to use and understand. Yeah. So it's logical. Yeah. yeah you click. There's a, a clear menu, which pretty much states what you need to find out. Uh, if it's mobile friendly. Good. Absolutely. In today's modern world, yeah, a lot of you would access things through either a digital app or um, mobile friendly, good. Anything else? So it is the next topic, but clearly another consideration is safety in terms of your private information. It's you know um, pretty important these days. Facebook just got brought over the coals for sharing data. Okay, because the you understand that whole what we're talking about here, and and why it's important, and why people have an issue with it. Can you explain? Okay, why? Well, it's like it's like a sense of trust. Yeah. Like as a customer, you want you trust a business, keep your personal details um, private, and like if you pay for some of the goods, you don't want your credit card details going out to some other like scammer and kind of them paying a lot of money off your account. Mm -hmm. Because do you know how valuable that data is? Yeah. yeah? You understand how? Do we understand this, people? Because this is really, really you know up to date uses of technology and how. The data that you have through, do you understand what cookies are? What's cookies? Yeah, they like save little elements of like your search history and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's no, it's it's no coincidence that your Instagram or Facebook feed comes up with, you know, things that you have recently searched for. Okay, no coincidence. It's no coincidence that your Google searches prioritize things in a certain order. Now, some of it um, businesses pay. You know, but a lot of it is built on your previous search history and your, you know, your own um, previous data. 
So for businesses to acquire that data, it is immense because you may not get sucked into, if you understand the system, chances are that you don't get sucked into it, but you would, can you imagine how many people actually do? Can you imagine the sales that, um, and here's something I just learned the other day. I was talking to Mr. Dodd about, because uh, the school actually is trying to encrypt more and more devices, like school. So this had to, my laptop here had to get taken back for encryption. iPads, there's a whole lot of thing going on about data security in schools because we've had a raft of, um, in our email, um, from you know hackers or third parties who've used, hacked into someone's email account and sent emails to staff with a, you know, obviously a link, you know, the dodgy ones that you get. And I asked him, well, what are those, what are the links for? What, if you click on the link, what actually happens? Does it download a virus? What does it do? And he said that, I don't know if you're aware, but it's quite interesting, a number of things happen. Um, one is, it could just be there, it'll put a virus which basically shadows your computer. So it's looking for personal data. So it's looking for credit card numbers, it's looking for things that get uploaded back so that the, the virus stays on your computer every time you're online, it has access to your system. Any personal information you put in it, it is mirrored in a, a computer somewhere else. So then they get credit card numbers which they can then on sell to a third party. So that's one thing. Um, it could just be searching for data, as in it could just be searching for your search history, it could just be searching for those sorts of things. Because actually what happens is then um, that data, um, they'll send you another email or it will come up in your Facebook feed as a link and then every time you click on a certain, so the marketing technique is called pay per click. All right, so if the virus can find out your preferences and then send further emails or put it into your social media feeds about those preferences, every time you click on it, actually the business who has created that ad gets paid. Get it? So by putting in, it's just another way that they can get more clicks because it suits your um, consumer preferences or whatever. And the third one, which was quite interesting, I found that some viruses actually then use your computer and the downloads, the download speed and the download data from your computer as a Bitcoin miner. So I don't know if you know what Bitcoin is, but it's a cryptocurrency and it's created through mining using data on computers. So some viruses spread to hundreds of thousands of computers and it, one, one Bitcoin is worth thousands. Yeah, and some actually create using the data from all the people, you know, people whose viruses have been infected and then they can on sell that for huge amounts. It's really interesting. Okay, but that's really the next topic. Okay, so uh, we I just talked about websites. So uh, you guys know what is a good and, and there's Cade's point up there as well. Um, so in the modern world, you need to have a website which is accessed by anyone. Maybe you have a separate language function. So if you're a global business, I don't know if you've seen some websites, but up in the top corner, it might have a, a language function, function which allows you to change it to Spanish or French. Generally, all business websites are going to be in English to start with, unless it's a, a local business, because that's the international language of business. But there are opportunities to change language. That's an important feature. As Cade said, you need to um, be able to have it applicable to all types of devices, be it laptops, mobiles, tablets, whatever. Um, and somewhere on there, you want to have uh, some sort of payment or uh, a way that consumers can order your goods. So, um, in terms of uh, the, the, the other aspect of websites and, and technology is that this has allowed us, if you like, um, or allowed consumers to search for the right product a lot easier. Plus you search for reviews. Who's actually search for reviews on particular products? Like what, Georgia? Um, more so like, um, sorry, like more like beauty products. Like sure. Do they, they, do they cause, are they, Mostly Ethically made. Yeah. yeah. Great. Ben? Um, I wouldn't really say I was a, um, a product the other day. I was just like looking at the reviews of like a store, so sort of selling a product. Yep. Yeah, yeah there you go. Like store, yeah. Fantastic. So that can be both good and bad for business, can't it? Yeah. Because if you, your business is doing the right thing, and TripAdvisor is probably the, I don't know if you've ever used TripAdvisor before when planning holidays and such, but 
Uh, a lot of businesses use trip or are really quite when you you know when you're older and you stay in hotels all around the world, you'll see the sign when you check in that says you know top ten trip advisor or they'll put pressure on you actually to to oh, would you mind are you on trip advisor? Could you leave a review for us positively? Because um, a lot of people use that as uh, uh, a lot of people use that to get advice about where to stay. Um, you can it can actually backfire because obviously there's a lot of fake reviews. Yeah, where the business can pay people to you know, people they know, or pe can set up a fake TripAdvisor account, put on a nice review there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you've got to be careful, I suppose. Um, advantages of just uh, about halfway down there, um, delivery. So well, uh, maybe that's a separate point. So much more choice and transparency of the quality and price is available to consumers. Um, yeah. The other good thing about websites is you can give feedback or ask uh, particular questions of the producer. Okay, so you can order. Um, it's a benefit. Generally, it will save you money, and we know this. Okay, so you order direct from the source. You don't have to go through the Harvey Norman. You can get your TV straight from Samsung or your computer straight from Apple if you want. You don't have to go to that third-party retailer, which generally will save you money. Plus. Um, it's increasing that internet businesses like this do not have a physical store. Amazon, one of the biggest retailers in the world, has not got one physical store. Okay, it's got huge warehouses, but not even one physical store. Okay. Other aspects which are good, uh, this is a big one, the digital distribution of goods. So this is a major way that businesses are using technology now, uh, particularly things like tickets or music or anything, you know, or movies. Like uh, my wife and I, my wife still wants to go to Bali and buy dodgy DVDs every time we go to Bali. I say, why would you bother? All right, we have a big TV which has Netflix at the flick of a button or it has Google Play or it has YouTube. They are the same company, of course. And we can buy whatever we want or rent whatever we want whenever we want for a few dollars, right? You guys know that video stores have disappeared, okay, non-existent. Um, <laughs> that also goes with things like uh, warranties or uh, um, instruction manuals, okay? So gone are the days where you more than likely sometimes get a massive 72-page instruction manual. You just get it emailed to you and you can flick through it if you're ever unsure. Um, you can flick to the online version and have a quick look through. All right, the rest of it I think is pretty self-explanatory. Explanatory. Uh, another example is just even today. So, you know, St. Mark's, there's no longer print, prints the yearbook, but any other publication that goes to parents now is all digital. It just saves money. All that paper, you don't, it's environmentally friendly as well, but. The bookmark, you, you don't know if you're aware, it got sent out to parents today. It used to be a nice little magazine, digital. Anyway. Okay, um, some people will also differentiate between uh, e-commerce and m-commerce. So m meaning mobile commerce, meaning apps on your mobile phone or your smartphone. So it's probably worthwhile that you do understand the differentiation between the two. In the less developed countries, m-commerce is the fastest growing method or means for um, technology. So in less developed countries, smartphones are everything. In less developed countries, the, the average everyday person probably doesn't have a laptop at home. They probably can't afford a tablet, but they do have a smartphone which can access Wi-Fi, which you know has probably some ability to go on the internet with data plans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so this is the, I guess, for, for a lot of people around the world, this is really where um, technology and business is at. Um, and as it says, you guys, you know, if, I'm sure if, if I was to do a sample of your phones, you would all probably have one shopping app on there. You'd probably all have, uh, the boys would all have the MBA app so we can check the scores, right? Um, every app, every business now has some sort of app to go with it. And the function, what's the best app in your opinion that you've got in terms of a business on your phones? ESPN, yeah. Any other any other tips? Any Netflix? I mean that's an app. 
not for phones. No, it isn't good for phones. I'll give you that. What app is something that you use, which you like the functionality of, which you think works well, which you have, which apart from social media, we're talking about business. Great. Did you pay, do you pay for that or not? Cool. But it raises awareness about the business and the yeah. concept, though, doesn't it? Any others? Hmm, okay. Right, people, do you get it? Plus, obviously, social media. Um, social media is really a, a separate thing, which um, we might deal with in the next lesson. Um, but uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat are actually businesses. Yes, they are public businesses which you can buy and sell shares for on the New York Stock Exchange, and they raise their revenue through advertising. Um, so it's huge the amount of money that Facebook actually raises through its <coughs> advertising, because Facebook has something like what two billion plus. Over two billion of seven or eight billion people in the world on one social media platform. You, can, you know, I mean, the market is endless. Okay, we'll leave it there.